All right. Man, we had uh, 59 kids here tonight, so it was a blessing. And uh, and uh, I guess this time of the year, too, they're all excited and kind of a little bit wild. But I appreciate all you guys who are helping us uh, feed them tonight. And I want to tell you guys, uh, the amazing thing about Psalms 22 is uh, you're going to see the you know, the passionate prayers you saw last week, the passionate prayers of David when he was suffering. And uh, we, we tend to have a lot of passion in our prayers when we're suffering, okay? But, 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 but here's, what's, here's what's fascinating. David's prayers of uh, praise when the things are good are just as passionate. And I'll tell you guys, I, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I'm guilty that I don't pray as passionately when things are good, right? All right, and I think we're all kind of guilty of that. Uh, but what's the fascinating aspect is you're going to see two different prophecies come together tonight. You're going to see the prophecies that we saw last week where the prophecies of David were um, with, the, with the crucifixion of Jesus, and he was prophesizing uh, with the, with, uh, about Jesus' uh, death and burial and resurrection. He was prophesizing the gospel. But what you're going to see tonight, you're going to see some more of that, but you're also going to see something that's very fascinating, and that is the second, second coming of Jesus. And you're going to see David in his prayers prophesize the second coming of Jesus. And tonight's uh, title of our message tonight is Victory in the Second Coming. And uh, I'm going to preach expositorily, word by word, verse by verse. And we're going to start here in Psalms 22. Uh, verse 22 through 31 will be our text. So Psalms 22, 22 through 31, and I read God's word. I will declare your name, my brethren, in the midst of the assembly. I will praise you. You fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All of you offspring of Israel. That was very important. For he has not despised or adored the affliction of the afflicted, nor he has hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard, My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before him, those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord, and the fa all the families of nations shall worship before you. The kingdom is the Lord's, and he will rule over all the nations. All the, possess, all the prophets of earth shall eat and worship, and those who will go down to the dust shall bow down before him, even he who cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted on the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born, that he has done this. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word tonight, and Lord, uh, just to help us through this next 15 minutes, and Lord, I just pray that you the, tonight, that the folks that are here tonight would just get a word from, word from you, Father. They don't get a word from me. And Father, there are so many prophecies that you gave David. Um, and if we would just read these and study these, they're, they're so uh, eye-opening. And, and, and Father, I just pray that you just let the scripture come alive tonight, uh, whether they're here at the church or they're watching online, Lord. Uh, this is a great book. This is a great word, and we thank you for it. And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you go to, uh, we're going to start here in verse 22, and I'm going to read this again. Um, in verse 22, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. I will praise you. Now, here's what David's doing here. And when I studied through the commentaries here, uh, I will declare your name. So he's not saying, I, this is in... This is, not, uh, this is not my name. I'm declaring your name. I, I'm, I'm thanking you, okay, in the midst of the assembly. David is a forerunner to Jesus. You know, he's six generations removed from Jesus. Six generations later, Jesus Christ is going to stand in front of an assembly, okay? And he will. And you guys remember this. You see, this is what's so fascinating. David says, I will remember your name in front of the assembly, Okay, now what he means by that, what, what, what the prophecy is here, okay, Jesus will stand in front of assembly, okay? And this is one of the first kind of meetings here. In John 19, 10, 
Then Pilate said to him, <laughs> Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you or the power to release you? And Jesus answered in red letters, Okay, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has a greater sin. Jesus is standing in front of an assembly, and Pontius Pilate is acting as his judge. Okay? David is a forerunner to that. So see this, when he talks about the assembly, yet David is forecasting Jesus again, but he also is forecasting the importance of declaring Jesus' name. He's telling us that we need to say Jesus' name. Jesus is going to stand before Pontius Pilate, but we also got to declare Jesus' name. And you're going to see this, this theme throughout the New Testament, okay, uh, when, when the Apostle Paul, it was Apostle Paul not say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for the salvation to everyone who believes, first the Jew, then the Greek, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile, Romans 1.16. Okay, he's declaring his name. But notice what he says here in verse 23. Look here, verse 23. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All descendants of Jacob, glorify him. Fear him, all of you. This is very important right here. Offspring of Israel. Okay. Now, I pondered that for a little bit when I first read that, when I was studying for this, the offspring of Israel. You know who the offspring of Israel is? It's us. <laughs> It's us. It's the Gentiles and everybody in this room. Is anybody Jewish here? I didn't think so. We're all Gentiles, right? We're the offspring of Israel, right? This is what David is prophesying, the offsprings of Israel. Now, here's the thing. Notice that the fear of the Lord, but let's start with the fear of the Lord first. Fear of the Lord. Praise Him. I want to tell you guys, God has delivered me from sin in my life and, 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 and temptations hundreds of times because of the fear of the Lord. Because of the fear of the Lord. All right, he, he, he's led me. He's led me to seek him in my weakness. He's led me to seek him uh, when I have, uh, when the world has tried to destroy me. All right, and I know that he has done the same for every single one of us here tonight. God has been true to his word. And it's so good to have a fear of the Lord in a healthy way. It's, it's turning away from evil. He gives us peace. He gives us joy and life and blessings. And he does the same thing in our lives that he's doing in David's life. But here's what you're going to see here. And get, David is giving praise right now. And see, here's what we don't know. We don't know the exact situation that David is writing in. So we kind of anticipate that maybe David is, 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 is perhaps um, um, getting some type of victory over Saul. Because we know that Saul has been chasing him. We know around this time frame he's been hiding in caves in different places. Okay, but right now it's getting good for David. Okay, and this is, but this is where his passion and his, in his prayers were just as passionate as it was when he was, when he was, uh, when he was suffering. The passionate prayers. I wish I had that ability. I wish I could pray as passionately, and I wish, I think we all do, uh, when there's not a crisis in our life. We tend to pray really hard, okay? But here's the thing. All of you offspring in Israel... He's predicting the offspring will fear and praise our Lord. And that is us. That is the Gentiles. Who would bring the Gentiles? Well, when Jesus came, okay, uh, he, was, he was the master at it first. And then he would turn that task over to Paul eventually. But Jesus' uh, contacts with Gentiles on the earth and the times that he was there was, was, was uh, pretty cool. I mean, you think about it. Uh, you know, he, he, he healed the Gentile that had the demonic maniac. You remember that guy? He was a Gentile. You remember the, uh, the ten leapers, uh, uh, lepers, he healed one. And you remember the uh, Samaritan woman at the well? I mean, there's so many times that Jesus started reaching out to Gentiles, okay? And it's, it's amazing that, that David would, would prophesy that someday we would be, uh, uh, go beyond the nation of Israel. You recall the Samaritan woman. The sole audience was just Jesus, okay? Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. But notice what he says here in verse 24. Psalms twenty-two, twenty-four: 24. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor he has hidden his face from him, but he cried to him and he heard. Okay? <clears throat> now, when you, when you study several different commentaries here, 
David, again, is transitioning to a prophecy, okay? <laughs> He's transitioning to a prophecy, and here's what I'm going to say. There's, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of differences of opinion on this, but here's my take. David had been running from Saul, <laughs> okay, and, and we didn't know exactly what happened, but we know that somehow God answered his prayer, okay? And I believe David, uh, through that, is saying definitely Saul, <laughs> as you guys know, afflicted David, did he not? You know, he chased him down for, for several years, okay? David was in a cave, and you remember the time in the cave where, where Saul was using the bathroom and David cut his robe off, or he didn't, he didn't kill him. He could have afflicted him right there, all right? But that was not the will of God. All right, and see, this is what he's saying here. Uh, 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 affliction of the afflicted. <coughs> but you could also easily uh, um, interpret this, um, it says some do, to interpret this passage as a prophecy of the crucifixion. Okay? <coughs> because didn't Jesus, uh, when they were in the process of murdering Jesus, okay, on the cross, and what did he do? He said, Father, forgive them, did he not? The very people that are murdering him. So some people will think that. But notice what it says in verse 25. We're going to look at 25 and 26 here. My praise shall be of you <coughs> in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. Now this is really cool in verse 26. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. Think about this for a second, folks. Think about this. The praising of the Lord will not be limited to Israel, okay? It'll be carried out in the great assembly of believers someday. But the poor shall eat and be satisfied. Now, here's what we're doing here again. We're transitioning from Old Testament to New Testament prophecy, okay? Remember when the Jews asked for a sign? And what Jesus do? He fed the 5,000. We know that was really 25,000 because they only counted the men, right? And so that he fed the 5,000. Uh, with uh, with two pieces of bread and and uh, the, the the two loaves and and the fish, okay, and he turned that in. So he fed them. But remember what he said. Remember what he said. Now look at what David said, and then look what Jesus did. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. So then Jesus, after he did that miraculous deal, and remember when they said to him, "Sir, give us this bread always." And what did Jesus say in John? Uh, 19 or John 6 35 Jesus said to them I am the bread of life whoever comes to me shall not hunger whoever believes in me shall never thirst I think it's pretty cool here David said the poor shall eat and be satisfied those who seek him will praise the Lord let your heart live forever you see how that nests there you see what I'm saying okay you see see here see David is forecasting the gospel right now the poor shall eat and be satisfied, okay? And remember what Jesus said. Remember what Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me shall never hunger, all right? Yet David will say, we'll praise the Lord and let your heart live forever. And that's a phenomenal statement if you think about it, okay? Uh, because here's the thing. Praise him and be satisfied. Let your heart live forever. <laughs> the bread of life. And this is what I hope when you see the Bible come alive, when you see these prophecies from the Old Testament to the New. But notice what he says here in verse 27. <coughs> all the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of nation shall worship before you, for the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules all over the nations. Now, do you see the transition, not from Jesus, okay, first coming, not from Jesus' first coming, but to Jesus' second coming? Well, he's going to rule over all the nations. See, the family of nations will bow down. We know this is a prophetic vision here, okay? Here again, and the Psalms points to Christ, okay, and, it, and his gospel. But now he's gone to the ends of the earth, and the believers are being called from all the families of the nation. And every, you know, but you guys know what it says. Jesus now establishing his rule over all the nations. You see that there in verse 28. And one day, everybody will bow before him. Matthew 28, 18. Uh, uh, Philippians uh, 2, 9, Revelations eleven fifteen. 15, it's going to happen. Everybody will bow down before him someday. And David's prophesizing that right now. He's doing that in this verse. But look what it says here in verse 29. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship those, now this is very important here, all those who go down to the dust shall bow down before him. These are David's words. These are David's prayers. 
He who cannot keep himself alive. Think about this. Look at these words. Prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. The image here is that great feast that we're going to have all someday when the new heaven comes down and the new Jerusalem comes down, okay? And this is the Masonic kingdom that he's talking about when, 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 when we see this. But David's not, he's prophesizing the final judgment that we're all going to stand before God someday. And the believers, believers, remember what we're going to do? We're going to have a glorious feast, okay? And I know it's going to be a lot better than Wednesday pizza night with some salad, okay, and some pepperoni pizza. We know it's going to be a great, great, great feast. But notice what he says here. Notice what David says here. Go down to the dust shall bow before him, even who cannot keep himself alive. What does this translate to? Here's what my view is, and, and some of the, the scholars that I read uh, preparing for this message believe this too. Revelation 20.10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and they shall be tormented to day and night forever and ever. Revelation 21, 8 says, But the fearful, unbelieving, and the abdominal murders, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and the liars shall have their part in the lake, and the burneth of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. David prophesied all this. And that's what's so fascinating. And this is what I hope you guys see in this beautiful message. And in closing tonight, I'm going to close with one verse here in Psalms, in the last two verses here. A prosperity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteous people to who will be born. You see, guys, victory is in the second coming, and that's what Dave is prophesizing here. But believing the Gentiles will be included in this feast. The Gentiles will indeed be included in this feast. Abraham and his descendants, the blessings of the whole world, and it all started in Genesis 12. The fulfilled Christ would die someday, and that glorious fulfillment is going to be right here and right now. This is what's so fascinating when you read through Psalms, and especially Psalm 22, and you see all these prophecies David is making in these prayers. With every head bowed and all eyes closed, Father, I just thank you for this time that we get to have in your word tonight. Father, we're going to have some... um, We've got people on a prayer list that we need to remember tonight. And Lord, we just, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. And uh, I thank you for this prophecy that you give us in Psalms 22. And just help us read it, help us understand it, and help us apply it to our lives today. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.